You gentlemen have seen the movie, correct? I uh, saw yeah, I just, I just finished minutes. watching it. Well, y'all going to be mad with me because I don't really have a whole lot nice to say. But before we go, shout out to the old sponsor, View TV. Check them out at ViewTV dot, uh, viewmedia.tv. Let's take a look at the clip of some of the action from Wonder Woman. Then we're going to break it down. I'm going to tell you why I wasn't a big fan. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Wonder Woman 1984. It started out kind of similar to the last movie where they went to the backstory of Diana as a child. And mm -hmm. fellas, I honestly like that part. I think they should do either a TV series or a movie about her early upbringings in Themyscira and maybe even do a movie about her mom messing around with the gods that helped create this young lady. And just to get along with the story, uh, Wonder Woman gets on. She's working in at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. And this is Barbara. This is one of the villains in the movie. And she meets Barbara because there is another stone. Fellas, I'm going to just keep this thing real with y'all. I'm going to show y'all this damn stone. I'm going to keep this thing real with y'all. If you're going to have a movie with a stone that gives powers and it's not called Marvel, Infinity Wars, Infinity Stone, Thanos is getting it. Your movie better be good as hell. <laughs> it, it better be good as hell. I, let me tell you something. This was not good enough for a movie where a stone is going to give you power. Leave that to Marvel. So people touch this damn stone, and whatever you wish for, ladies and gentlemen, it comes true, but with a caveat. You also lose something when you make your wish, and it comes true. So as we go through the movie, you of course, you guys know, um, Diana made a wish. She touched the damn stone. She wished for her boyfriend, Steve, to come back. So Steve came back, reincarnated in this brother right here. There is Steve right there. And Barbara, poor thing, poor little geek, played by my girl, um, damn, damn, Chris, um, Kristen Wiig. She played Barbara, and she, she made a wish, and her wish was that she could be cool and have all the things Diana have. Only catch is she didn't know that Diana was the princess of Themyscira and had these powers. And then we had one more antagonist in this movie, my man right here. This brother plays in a whole lot of movies. This is Pedro Pascal. He was Maxwell Lord in the movie, and his whole mission was to be a powerful oil tycoon. And he gets his hands on the damn stone. And what does he wish for, ladies and gentlemen? This brother wished to become the stone. I was, what, <laughs> he wants to be the stone. Oh, my God. So to get on with the story, Diana needs to find the stone so she can reverse everything. And while Diana is going through that, she finds out that Kristen Wiig has the powers of Diana. They get into a fight. Fight scene wasn't all that great to me. Um, Diana uses her lasso a lot in this movie. I personally yeah. thought they overused that damn lasso too much. And then we get on where they go into the backstory of how she gets into this outfit, and I'll let one of the other fellas cover that. But overall, fellas, I didn't really care for the movie. The acting was fine. The villain was weak as hell to me. Max Lord was a weak ass villain Kristen wig being cheetah she was cheetah for like five minutes at the end of the movie and my other gripe about this movie it was just too damn long and i'm going to coin a phrase for y'all y'all have heard the term romantic comedy haven't you fellas mm. rom-coms yeah, rom they call them rom-coms i'm going to coin a phrase rom he because this was a romantic hero movie Simple and plain. <laughs> Having said those things, I would rate this movie no higher than a six. Thank God you can watch it on HBO. Larry, I give the floor to you first. Yeah, I have to agree. I feel like that. What? This movie. Huh? What? I, yeah. I just knew you was going to take me to task. No. Nah. <laughs> oh, oh. 
Oh, no, I feel oh. like I feel like it wasn't it wasn't the worst movie in the world, no doubt. And I always enjoy seeing Gal Gadot. She's 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 a blazer. I, I actually really like her as Wonder Woman. Um, but the movie just wasn't that it wasn't that good because, like you said, it didn't really have a strong villain. I mean, you had this guy, and and here's the thing: it's like they they tried to do the sort of same formula that they do with Superman where you may have like the human villain being in like Lex Luthor and then you have like the super powered villain and you know in this case being you know uh, Minerva or or Cheetah but the problem with the problem with that with that whole storyline with with Minerva and Cheetah is that through that whole there there was only one real boss battle fight you yeah. know and then, <laughs> <laughs> and in that fight, the entire time, you know, Wonder Woman was not trying to, was well, she was never trying to kill her. She was never trying to take her out. Mm -mm. The entire time she was trying to save her. She kept on asking her, please don't make me do this. Stop. Uh, re, you know, just renounce your wish. She was, she was trying to save her. And so it's kind of like she was fighting with one hand behind her back. She was never getting busy. It wasn't like she was fighting like she was Deadpool, just, just going ham on people. And so... Like the one boss battle wasn't even really a boss battle, no. you know. <laughs> I mean, it, it just it just wasn't, you know. Like the the battle with Steppenwolf that was a boss battle, you know. And, and even that was weak, but yeah, but, well, but this yeah. was weaker. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's just it was okay. It was it was it was okay. Yeah. You know, it was a little sad. The whole thing with her having to 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 walk away and 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 lose her lose her dude again. It's just it was it was just okay. Like I I mean, yeah. part of me is like I, she can fly, so part of me wonders like why does she even need the invisible jet? You know, it's just well, that's I don't know. Point. And I, I mean, it could have been better. And I, I'll I'll be honest with you. Here's the thing that makes me that makes me uh wonder about all of this stuff with Warner Brothers. And sending everything to to uh, to HBO Max. I know that the the uh, directors guild was all up in arms about this. But here's the thing: if this is the quality that we are going to expect from these uh, from these first run movies going from Warner Brothers straight to HBO Max, I mean, in all in all honestly, they they should be they should be happy. The, the directors guild should be happy that they have a good platform to send these movies to because these movies should not be. I mean. Obviously, Wonder Woman is supposed to be a big tentpole movie. This movie would have crashed in the movie theater. People would have saw this movie, and they would have flamed it. Like it's right. one thing when you're watching this sitting at home and you're watching it basically for free because it's on it's on a service that you're already paying for. But if you have to go to a movie theater and go pay 15, 18, 20 bucks, and then you have to go pay another twelve dollars to get your popcorn and soda, so now you're in for it for like thirty bucks or something, and then the movie is just mediocre at best people are going to be pissed they're going to come out and say this was garbage don't see it and that word gets out real quick and i honestly think they're they're better off with this movie streaming than had going to the theaters and if warner brothers is putting out this same caliber of movie if this was supposed to be their tent pole and they're in the end and this was the the highest caliber one they have out i i mean the rest of them are going to be even more disappointing you got that um, right T streams. I was highly disappointed. Now yeah. we want to hear what do you think? Yeah, I'm I'm going I'm going to have to stand in agreement as well. At best, it was meh. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I think you know when you think of when you think of a, a movie that on the scale that this should have been, mm -hmm. you know, you, it, this one it, it horribly fell short for me. Uh, I think that I think they tried they tried too hard to to make it too much of uh, they romanticize it a little too much for me uh, for it to be like a super, you know, a superhero movie. Um, and when you I, I agree, the 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 choice of villains, the, the magnitude of of how that was put together was eh, it, it wasn't really it wasn't really captivating to me i mean yeah she was swinging her lasso and jumping on through the air and and 
you know, swinging, you know, swinging through lightning bolts and all this other kind of stuff. But when it came down to the nitty gritty, you know, she she defeated the main villain by by being crouched over in the corner with her lasso tied around his ankle crying. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And so that wasn't, you know, that wasn't heroic. For, you know, that wasn't heroic enough for me, considering that Diana is the woman with no father whose mother formed her out of clay and Zeus breathed life into her. You know, I'm thinking that, you know, she was, I was getting ready to come out and bang, but I knew it was going to be something in the mix when they came up and said Wonder Woman 84. I, so I just, you know, when, when, when I first realized that that was going to be the title, I sort of knew that it was going to be, meh, it was going I'll to tell be. You what T Strings, I'll tell you what would have made this movie dope. If if at the is towards the end when they were having that boss battle with with uh with uh Cheetah and her, if Cheetah would have been getting it in, just straight whooping her tail, and right when it looked like Diana was gonna lose, here comes Nubia. That oh. would have been dope. <laughs> that would have been dope right there. Boy. That would have been dope. It would have been a perfect introduction for her character, and people would have been geeked all the way up. Well, all but, the way but, up. But see, the problem with that, Larry, that would have helped, but it still wouldn't have done nothing for the magnitude of the overall rating of the movie because it was just too long. The villains was terrible. I mean, honestly, we were supposed to be more invested in Max Lord than we was in Cheetah, and I was more invested in Cheetah than I was Max Lord. Because but here's what that would have done. If they would have brought Nubia in at the end and saved her, it would have had, even if it didn't do much to save the overall rating of this movie, it would have had people excited to see the next one because they would have been like, oh, snap, they finally introduced their character. It's here. We're going to actually get to see a movie with, with, with Diana and Nubia together. But now what they do, I mean, not to spoil too much, but it's like what they do. They they introduced, uh, what's her name, Linda Carter as... as um. What's her name? Uh, Astaria, whatever her name yeah. is. She was the warrior that first wore this outfit that protected Themyscira from men, and they thought she was dead. Linda Carter pops up at the very end post credit, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm not going to tell you what she did. But nobody's, I mean, to be, let's be real. It was cool seeing her. It was a nice gimmick, but right. nobody's checking for her to watch this, to, to watch a whole new movie. No one's checking for her as all uh, to see a whole new movie with with her. I mean, if they would have introduced that new character, that would have been dope. If they would have had Nubia in there, that would have been dope. But they didn't. Yeah, and they if he was under thirty, you might not you might not know who Linda Carter was anyway. Oh yeah, but yeah. likely you don't know. You, you, you got, got to be a you got to be a hardcore comic fan. To, and you know they tried to make these movies not just for hardcore fans. Tried to make them for the broad swath. Yeah. Most people don't know who Linda Carter is. Let me put Linda Carter back on the screen. <laughs> I mean, this is before I was born, Wonder Woman right. was out. This is like late 1978, 79. I wasn't even born then. But this is, this is the old Wonder Woman right there. And, man. You make us feel That old, was the man. Wonder Woman I grew up on. <laughs> man. Ladies and gentlemen. I don't know, man. I'm not dogging it. I'm not going to say it's garbage. I know some people are saying it's terrible. It's garbage. I'm not going to go that far. It wasn't like it was garbage. It just, I'll put it like this. This is what, this this proves to me that the first Wonder Woman was just a DC anomaly. <gasps> it was it was a blip on the radar. It was an anomaly. What? And now DC is back to their regular garbage ass movies. That's what, what it is. Well, La Larry, before oh God, Larry, before that's what it is. I mean, let's just be real. It, it, I mean, Marvel makes great live action movies, and DC simply doesn't. And they made a great one with the first Wonder Woman, and that was an anomaly. So, and now they're back to doing their regular thing. So, Larry, this movie was directed by Patty Jenkins, who directed the last movie. Writing credits go to Patty Jenkins, Jeff Johns, Dave Callaman, and guess who helped produce the story? Patty Ooh. Jenkins, Jeff Johns, and Gal Gadot. I think that's where your problem comes from. Yeah. I think that's where it your just problem wasn't, I mean, let's just be real. Right? This movie should have been grittier. It should have been more bang around. 
There should have been more fights in there. Forget, I mean, I get, I, I like, I, I get why they like having the whole human villain on one end. Fine, do that. We need right. a real super villain. You want to have a superhero movie? Get us a real super villain, somebody that can really throw blows with our superhero that challenges them, makes them have to fight and really want it. We didn't get any of that. This was we didn't this get was any of that. This was almost a love movie. And yeah. the way they've been hyping this movie up for literally two years, I think that adds to the disappointment because they have literally been hyping this thing. And I think Larry said it best Wednesday. Larry said he didn't really understand or see how being in 1984 was going to help the story. And I got I got to admit, it didn't do anything for the story. It didn't. Was we supposed to feel something about Steve coming back, flying airplanes? in 1984 versus if they just done it nowadays him flying a plane now that wouldn't have changed yeah. anything about the story maybe and, it was a fanny pack i mean <laughs> you, well, hey but t streams he can go to europe and get a man bag that take care of the fanny pack i mean they should have just you're, they should have done it in today's it's set in today's time because it would have just simply have made it would have made it probably a, a less expensive film to make because you don't have to go and make everything, uh, you know, time appropriate. You could have just had it set today's date and it would have made it a less expensive film to make. It, I mean, it was a gimmick. Didn't work. Yeah. I think the whole movie was sort of gimmicky. It wasn't bad. It was interesting to watch. Gal Gadot's as hot as ever, but mm -hmm. it just, they needed a real villain. They didn't give us one, and I hope the next movie, if they're gonna, they're, they're gonna need to give us a real villain. So right, and let yeah. and, and DC and Warner Brothers, if you're gonna put a movie together that has a damn stone that give people powers, you better make that bitch good next time because we done seen a classic that had stones giving people's powers, and this damn stone. You gave someone powers who really ain't know what the hell he was doing. He was a horrible villain. But, fellas, give your ratings. Then we're going to move on so we can get ready to get on up out of here. T-Stream, you first. Uh, man, five. Okay. Larry? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say just because it was still a visually interesting movie. There, I mean, I'm going to give it – I'll give it a, a – Six and a half, seven. I, I, I'm I'm with Larry. I'm gonna give it at least a six because it was visually beautiful. The cinematography was great. The actors were fine, but the the storylines I really wasn't feeling. Action I wasn't feeling. It was too long, and the villains just didn't compel me enough to make the movie good. And when you try to have these horrible villains. And then you try to stick in there a rom he, which I'm coining the phrase romantic hero movie. It doesn't sit well. So if you're gonna have a rom hero movie, you need to have a compelling villain who threatens the love interest. That didn't happen. 